Today, I would like to show you different ways to alter your photos. I think we all love using photos in our junk journals and other papercraft projects, but how can we alter them to make them more interesting, to make them look more vintage, more grungy, or to give them a really special effect? There have been a lot of questions about mediums which you can use to alter your photos. And I would like to answer some of those questions with this video. But if you don't have any like fancy mediums in your stash, please stay tuned because I will show you also ways to alter your photos without any mediums and with things that you definitely have at home. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Thanks for joining me today. As you can see, I've prepared some photos <laughs> so that we can have some fun with those today. I would like to mention that I have chosen those photos from my stash, which I either have printed by myself or bought as a print. What do I mean by that and why have I chosen those? What you can see here on the top of the screen is a digital ephemera pack from my Etsy shop, meaning a digital printable paper which you can print at home. These are the vintage photo strips. I will link this item down below in the description box for you. And that's a whole pack of a total of 200 photos in this square format. You can, of course, cut, cut them separately or you can leave them as such a strip or longer or shorter or you could also um, use them in this direction if you want. But these are all printed on matte photo paper. <clears throat> what you can see here on the bottom are different photos from the Tim Holtz ideology collection from different sets, but these are also prints yeah everything that you can see here on the bottom is printed on paper and i bought them like this you could think oh that looks like an original because you know the, those prints are really really great and all of these look like they could come from an original vintage collection but this is also only a print yeah why have i chosen the prints why don't I use vintage original photos? That's very simple because original photos already have what I want to reach with my photos here. I have taken out three photos from my personal collection. And as you can see, they already have these damages, these really, really cool effects. And I can use these as they are because they are like naturally vintage do you know what i mean <laughs> they also sometimes already have this interesting edge here this nearly looks like it was cut with the tim holtz deckle trimmer <laughs> they also have some writing here and they have this vintage color already and um for example this one here also has some yeah, damages here because this originally was glued into a photo album and someone has torn it out. So this already looks really, really interesting and it looks like it is very old. But all of these don't have that in this way like I wanted. Do you know what I mean? They already have also like some darker... Um, edges here or those frames some of them don't have that um, here for example we also have a white frame but that looks relatively new because of the print I mean this came out of my printer I can't expect some damages that come out of my printer hopefully that will not happen and also these they have this frame here but that looks really new so I thought I will take these to show you my ways of altering those photos because my original photos already have that effect that I want to reach with those. For the first way of altering such a photo, I would like to use nothing. <laughs> because I want to show you that you can alter a photo even without any medium. Yeah, So it's a little lie because we... <laughs> 
<laughs> we are going to use a little bit of water in a second, but I think water is something that everyone has at home. So that's the reason why I said I want to do this with nothing. Yeah. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to crumble this photo. By the way, this is one of the vintage photo strip photos from my ephemera pack from my Etsy shop. As I said, the link is down below in the description box. And when you crumble this up and like fold it out, then you can see it's already really, really different compared to what we had before. This sounds a bit weird because I have done nearly nothing except of crumbling this photo. Yeah, but um, this is already really interesting in my eyes and you could use this exactly like it is. Yeah, you don't need any fancy mediums to alter a photo. If you look at this, you can see that the face itself looks a little bit weird, depending on the angle. You know, here she looks like an alien or something like that. It's a bit weird. So what I like to do is I like to put the photo to my table, take my finger and get, go over those areas like the face or other areas that you might have on your photo, which look weird to just flatten that a little bit so that you have the damages all around the face in this case and the face is intact and doesn't look weird anymore. If you think, oh, that's nice, but that is not enough. I want to have it like more damaged. You could also use some water and that is everything that I use for this technique. It's so simple. Just take the water and spritz it onto your photo. I have to say, this is printed on matte photo paper with an inkjet printer. If you use a laser printer, you will have no problem with water with your prints. But if you use an inkjet printer, you have to use the right paper for printing these out so that nothing can bleed with spritzing water. And now I can take my fingernail tool, for example, and just go over the edges here a little bit like this. Just peel off these little things here and because of the water this paper gets really really flexible you can peel this off really easily do that a little bit carefully because you don't want to have these damages too much i mean you don't want to tear a whole lot off here and um, destroy the photo completely yeah so <laughs> Maybe for a Halloween journal, that could also be a, a trick. But in the most cases, I guess we want to have those tinier damages. You could also, like here, it happened automatically. Let me try to make this a little bit more visible for you. You could also roll the paper. Can you see that? When you manage to get a bigger piece off from the paper, you could roll that. And when you let this dry, this little roll there stays where it is now and it gets like dry of course and hard so that it is not destroyable anymore in the end so that is a really really nice effect i think what you also can do is if you don't like to use your fingernails or if you have so short nails that you can't manage this um, then you could also take like a, some scissors or tweezers or something that has like this thing here yeah you could take a pokey tool or pokey tool or something else choose something that is not too sharp because you don't want to destroy the whole photo you just want to make some little areas that look like damaged and you can of course do this here with such a tool as well and this is perhaps a little bit more controllable than with your fingernail and you can see what you're doing. If you have your tweezers here, you can see what you're doing. If you have your hand over here, you can't see anything. Um, so this is, for me, the easier way. But if you don't have tweezers uh, or scissors or something like that, you could also do that with your fingers. And when you have this, you can, of course, also um, bring those little... Uh, things back that we had before with crumbling the photo for example like so after we've spritzed the water those areas got really flat but if you want to have them there you can just bring them back before the paper dries just 
do it as extremely um, as you want. You could also manipulate the shape of the photo with that. So originally this, this was a really nice square. If you look at it now, it looks really wonky. That can look really great in a junk journal, of course, and you can yeah, control the shape now while this paper is wet and then you can let that dry and this will stay in exactly this shape. I would recommend to let this air dry, but of course you could also use your heat tool for that. But I have to say, when you let that air dry, the chance that this stays 100% like it is now is bigger than if you blow this with your heat um, gun and perhaps um, some heat guns can heat the paper so much that this gets flat again. So I would say let it air dry. So I will do that and we will look at this again later. For the second way of altering a photo, I would like to use this one here by Tim Holtz. This is one of the ideology photos. And for this, I would start with a really similar thing like with the first one. I would like to crumble this up. And as you can see, this is really hard material. This is really, really thick. So I'm going to do this only on the edges. I'm trying to not touch the face here with this method. Um, only perhaps a little, little bit. But as you can see, the face on this photo is relatively small, I would say, compared to the rest here. And if I would um, have something like this, through her face, I don't like that so much. But of course, that's personal taste. So I am careful that I don't destroy her face. And as you can see, with this material, you already get a really cool effect just by crumbling it because this gets white here. That's because of the material. We are destroying the print here on the top layer with doing this and the white of the paper where it's printed to comes through. You can reach an effect like that with a printable as well. So this is from the Vintage Photo Strips ephemera pack from my shop. And if you crumble this, you can see it's totally different because of the material. You can see this, but it's not white. But you can reach a similar effect like here just by taking a sanding disc or a sandpaper. This is the sanding disc by Ranger. And you can just go over this carefully, please. Don't destroy the whole photo, but just rub the ink off from those areas here. Then you get a very similar effect. This looks already a little bit dirty. That's because my sanding disc has some leftovers from other projects. As you can see, here's a little bit of dirt on the sanding disc and that's why this looks really vintage now. But um, you can reach such an effect with this white here on a printed photo, which came from your printer as well. And if you think, okay, that is not vintage enough. This is like, you know, too new and we have these white areas here that we don't want and we want to have some really brownish areas on this photo then there's a really simple method let's take some distress ink vintage photo this is like an you know a really <laughs> historical thing <laughs> Because this is the first ink pad that I have ever bought from Ranger. And this is, it's just cool for me to, to use this because this is, I think, the first ever thing that I had from Ranger. Um, I'm mentioning that because this ink pad is already relatively dry and I don't have the re-inker. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> I, I definitely have to, bu to buy that to um, be able to fill this up again. But what I'm trying to say is, please use what you have and use like brownish colors that you have. That doesn't have to be ink. That doesn't have to be vintage photo. That can also be some watercolor, for example. That can be the cheapest children's watercolor palette that you can find in your stash. You could also use materials, uh, sorry, mediums like coffee, for example. We'll show you that in a second. But I want to start with this ink pad. I'm just going to apply a little bit of the ink. Yeah. 
uh, you can see <laughs> nearly nothing because it's so dry, but it will work. You will see. Um, but I would recommend to use a translucent medium. So um, when you spritz water, where is my water? To this, you can see I get this really light brownish and especially translucent thing on my desk. Um, if you use watercolor, that would look similar. I mm, wouldn't use acrylic paint. Yeah, I mean, if I was on a really empty and lonely island and the only thing that I had was acrylic paint and water, <laughs> then I would probably use acrylic paint. But that would be not my first choice. Do you know what I mean? So because even if you water down acrylic paint really, really much, it's still not the same like a translucent medium, like, for example, ink or watercolor. And when you have that, I, you can take the photo and I will first press that completely into this mixture of ink and water to let this soak in. Because when this soaks into the paper, you get really cool effects on those areas which were white before. Hopefully you can see that all of these white lines get brownish now. This is not so extreme yet, but this can be a nice effect when it's dry as well. If your background, for example, where you want to place this photo is really light, then this could be totally enough already. Um, you can, of course, let this soak in as much as you want, especially here where these little like damages are. Um, you can put that in here and let that soak into the paper. Give the paper a little bit of time to soak this up. And then you can just <clears throat> take your heat gun and dry this. You could also let that air dry. But um, with this material, I would say a heat gun is the better way because it's just uh, faster. So I will quickly do that. And as you can see, this looks really, really cool now. Isn't this just gorgeous? That looks like it came right out of a forgotten drawer or <laughs> from somewhere. This is really, really, really cool. Um, and especially for, as I said, lighter backgrounds, I like this light aged effect. If you think this is not enough for me, this is not enough grunge, you could also add another medium, uh, which I guess all of you have at home, and that's coffee. I just made a coffee for myself to drink, but... <laughs> and <clears throat> be careful that you don't use this if you want to drink this. <laughs> For my projects, I'm going to use this kind of stuff. This is just some instant coffee. Um, I don't like to drink this. In the past, I had to drink it because I <laughs> had no coffee machine here in my craft studio. But in the meantime, I have a real coffee machine. Yay. And I can make a coffee <laughs> like this from real beans. I'm really happy about that. But um, this is really good for paper craft projects because when you mix this with with hot water you have a brown mixture that smells a bit like coffee but you can't call it coffee but um, you can use this of course for a photo like this and this is something that you can get I would say nearly everywhere for nearly no money I mean you need not so much of this such a glass of this instant coffee i mean here in austria it's relatively cheap and it lasts a long time so if you don't want to buy ink or you can't afford ink then you could also use this i make sure that i stir this with my finger tool here uh, until those little tiny things from the coffee are completely gone so that i have a really nice mixture here um, if you have these little thingies left, um, then you will get a really sticky end result. So make sure when you use this instant coffee that it is really, really a, a good mixture, that you don't have these tiny things left. Otherwise, that will, yeah, the pages of your journal will stick together when you have these things here. Um, so we have that. 
then I'm going to take the photo and this time I do that a little bit more controlled because uh, when I put that in there as you can see this gets really really brown and it's really intensive but don't panic if you for example do it like this and you think Ooh, too much don't panic just take a dry paper towel while this is still wet and go over that and remove as much as you want you can see I'm also removing that there where the face is because I know that I want to use this like a focal point later and then I want to have the face standing out really much. That's also a good thing about altering your photos like this because you can control what you are doing and you can control where the dirt shall go. <laughs> so for example like this. This is already, for me, too close to her chin. So I will go in here and remove a little bit of that. And while this is still wet, <clears throat> you can, of course, also take your fingernail tool and go in here and damage this a little bit. And you can see the coffee has soaked into the paper so that this is not white anymore, the layer below. Uh, but or there are actually several layers as you can see here but it got brown and that of course looks really really authentic I would say and you can do that of course in several areas here and do that as much as you want you could also take back your tweezers and just go over the photo with the tweezers you can of course mix all of the methods methods that I'm showing you here and do that as extremely as you want. So I will just crumble this up here a little bit more like so and then I'm going to let this dry as well and we will look at this later again. Another thing that I really enjoy on my photos are crackles and there are different mediums how you can crackle your photos. One of those is the Crackle Paint Translucent. I will show you a second medium in a second, but this is really cool <laughs> and you can reach really, really cool effects with this. I have chosen these photos here to show you that you can use that on different surfaces. This is a Tim Holtz ideology photo. As you can see, it's relatively thick and it is glossy. And this photo is from the Vintage Photo Strips ephemera pack from my Etsy shop. This I've printed on matte, ooh, matte photo paper, as I said in the beginning. So this paper is thinner than this one and it is matte. But you can use this crackle paint on both of these surfaces, of course. Let's start with this here. Um, I would like to mention that some of those more glossy surfaces have to be prepared with something so that a medium like this can stay there without falling off in the end. And all of those glossy mm, surfaces you can prepare with, for example, some matte medium or collage medium or something like that. Just apply a thin layer so that a medium like this has the chance to stick there very well. Or what you also can do, and that's what I'm going to do now, is to sand that. I'm using the Ranger sanding disc for that and just make the surface a little bit rough so that this glossiness disappears on the one hand it looks more interesting, more vintage, more aged and, you know, more artsy. And it makes the surface a little bit like rough so that the medium can stay there better. And of course, all of these uh, effects that you reach with the sanding paper or the sanding disc, you will see through the paint the crackle paint later so remember if you have something like this and you think oh that is relatively white here compared to the photo itself because now here the white paper from the from underneath came through of course then of course you can decide before you add the crackle paint if you want to add something else here 
and I want to um, bring this white down a little bit with my Distress Ink Vintage Photo. So I'm going over this with my ink pad here to make this a little bit more brown. And then I'm going to take a paper towel to just work this in a little bit. You could of course also leave this exactly as it is now. Also a cool effect. But as you can see now, it looks a little bit more authentic, a little bit more harmonious. And with the brown, it gets more interest. I think this looks better than with the white. But of course, you could also leave it white if you want. Now let's take the crackle paint. And I'm going to take um, a palette knife. <clears throat> and I'm taking a little bit of this here. And I'm applying that here with my palette knife. You could use a paintbrush as well, but with a palette knife it's of course faster and I can say I get better results with a palette knife than with a brush because um, yeah, I can apply this uh, more regular than with a paintbrush. I don't like, but that's a personal thing, I don't like those brush strokes to be seen in the paint. Um, here on the bottom of the photo you can see it's relatively irregular but it has no brush strokes and here on the top where it's a little bit thicker you can see it's really 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 like smooth. I don't know if that is the right English word for this but do you know what I mean? It's like a mirror and that makes for me the photo more interesting in the end instead of having all of these brush strokes and irregular areas because for me those grungy and irregular areas already come with the sanding and I don't want to have this like overloaded with effects if that makes sense. I'm going to let this air dry. It's not a good idea to use a heat gun on this because um, the crackle paint and also other mediums by Ranger, they shrink when they dry. And of course, with that, the paper crumbles a little bit because, you know, it's the medium sticks to the paper. And if it shrinks down, then the paper like gets waves and that stuff. And to avoid that, we want to avoid heat. And also, um, the result gets not so nice if the paint shrinks too fast. And with the heat tool, you would do that, exactly that. Yeah, it would uh, shrink very fast, it would dry very fast, and then the result is not so nice. So we are going to let this air dry and look at this again later. And uh, what I like about the crackle paint is that you also can, yeah, like, control or decide where you want to put an effect like this crackle effect. Uh, for the German video I've done this here. This is also one of the vintage photo strips photos from my digital ephemera pack and as you can see I've applied the crackle paint here to this balloon. This is not dry yet. You can see it starts crackling here but what I'm trying to say is you can apply this medium of course to special areas on a photo. You can decide for example a balloon would look great with crackles. I mean that's an interesting thing isn't it? Or a window or everything that's glass. Um, everything that's for example Christmas themed or for example here. Um, this photo from uh, the Tim Holtz ideology line. Look, the moon. Imagine you would have the crackles only on the moon. That would look really, really great. Or only on the sky. Or if you have, for example, a photo of such a couple, I really like to apply this crackle effect only on one half. For example, only on the woman here. Perhaps you want to have like a memory journal or something. Then you could also bring out a special person on a photo with the crackles. We will let this dry as well, air dry. And then we will look at this again later. 
Another medium which you can use to get crackles to your photos is the Distress Collage Medium Crazing. This is, as you can see, totally different than the paint. This is way thicker and this you can apply really, really well with a spatula as well. You could take a paintbrush, of course, as well, but I like to use a spatula because it's just easier. I want to use this photo here from the Tim Holtz Ideology collection and I'm going to sand this a little bit here on the edges as well with my sanding disc just for a little bit more interest. I'm going to take this with my spatula and I'm just going to smear this over the photo. Um, you could think, oh that is a lot. Yes it is a lot but I like to take more in the beginning and spread that out to be able to see where I want to have that. And that's easier for me. You could also start with not so much of the medium and then add more. But for me, it's easier like this. And I can get the result that I want with this method easier than the other way around. You know what I mean. Let's leave it like that. So you can see here it's relatively thick and here it's relatively thin. I did this on purpose so that you can see what happens. Mm, the thicker you apply this medium, the bigger the crackles get. The thinner you apply the medium, the finer the crackles get in the end. So we are going to let this air dry as well. Okay, so these are dry now. This is the result that we got with the Distress Crackle Paint Translucent. Really, really cool. Look at these crackles. I mean, what the heck? This is just so gorgeous. And I love this effect with the ink below that gives it already a really, really cool finish but I want to dress this up a little bit more um, of course you could leave it like it is but I want to show you different options so we will throw something on top in a second and that's the distress oxiding refiller vintage photo I will show you a really cool effect that you can reach with this and this is the result that we got with the crazing medium as you can see totally different um, the crackles are totally different <laughs> and as you can see you can't see them so so well yet but we can also do something to bring them out a little bit more and that's using a crayon. I have the vintage photo distress crayon here so let's see what we can do here. So first of all let's start with the piece that we've made with the crackle paint and then let's go on with the piece that we've made with the collage medium crazing. So here I want to take my oxide ink refiller and I'm going to throw a tiny little bit on here just like this. Then I'm going to take some water to let this run down here like so. You could also take the rest from here and just, whoo, just dip that in there. Then I'm going to wait a tiny little bit because I want that the ink can go into those little crackles and soak into the paper. Um, the <coughs> crackle paint translucent is glossy when it dries. Ooh, as you can see, this has a really like shine. And that means you know that the ink will not dry completely on top of this slippery surface. That is not possible. So I want that the ink has time enough to go in there and then when that has happened I can take a paper towel and remove the ink that is sitting on top of the medium and then I have my cool effect. What you also can do is take your heat tool and dry this so that this is a little faster and that you don't have to wait because you know drying time sucks <laughs> and then you can go over this with your paper towel and remove what is sitting 
here on top and then you have this cool effect. This looks nearly like rust, I would say. Of course, it's depending on the color that you use, but look, how cool is that? That is just amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Ranger. <laughs> I really love this effect. This is absolutely gorgeous. And of course, you could also take other colors. I know that this is not everyone's taste. Having like a nearly black and white photo and then this rusty reddish brown color. But please have in mind that you can also use like grays or other neutral colors. That doesn't have to be vintage photo and that doesn't have to be such a reddish um, brown. Yeah, you could also use any other color. Um, <clears throat> so, but to compare that, I'm going uh, to use vintage photo crayon. I mean the same color like this but as a crayon so the color is actually a tiny little bit different because of the different medium but you know what I mean <laughs> I want to go with brown here as well instead of gray so that you can compare that better so this photo is the one that we um, where we use the collage medium crazing and to bring out those crackles a little bit more you can use a crayon and that's also how it is um, meant to use yeah because this is a nice effect and of course you could leave this yeah there's no one who says that you can't leave it like this but um, you can bring this out even more just by scribbling over this take your finger tool and smear this around a little bit and if you think oh that smears not so well just take a tiny drop of water Make your finger only a tiny little bit wet and then you can go over this and you can move it better than without the water. But mm, please, if you want to hear my opinion, try it first without water. And you can also take a paper towel, as you can see here. So this is dry, by the way. And go over this to work this in really, really well. The goal is to get the crayon into those little cracks now it looks like you would look through a broken um, glass window in some way and you could look into this beach and this is something that I did within a few minutes as you could see of course you can alter this way way more you could also roughen the edges here you could throw some ink on here. You could put other mediums on top to make this even more grungy and even more altered or vintage. Um, I wanted to show you the different mediums. So this is probably not my end result for a journal, but I wanted that you can see the single mediums on one photo. Do you know what I mean? So here you can uh, see this, compare it with this. And if I had mixed the the techniques too much, then you later on can't see anymore which effect comes from which technique. That's the reason why these are probably not finished yet. But I think this way you can compare it the best and you can see the best how the single things come out. So that is that. Distress collage medium crazing. And I'm also going to show you the other results. So this is also the Crackle Paint Translucent. <clears throat> and this looks just, ooh, just gorgeous as it is. I really like this in its pure condition. On this photo, this is just, I mean, this tells so much, doesn't it? This is, uh, I could cry when I see this, because this photo now tells a whole story only with these crackles on top. It's amazing. It's just amazing. I will show you the balloon from the other photo as well. That turned out absolutely fantastic. Look. <laughs> Isn't this just cool? That looks so, so cool. And that is also the Crackle Paint Translucent. And then we have the results that we've made with um, the ink, coffee and water. That is this one. 
and I will also show you the one from the German video made with the same technique but here you can see two different results next to each other and perhaps you can also imagine better how this would look if you would put this into a journal where you have more photos like this and then last but not least we have this photo where we added just water and then removed these areas here from the top layer of the photo we'll show you the the other result as well so that you have two different examples here and as you can see um they stay really like they are yeah they are not so flimsy anymore if you add have added water to this you think oh i have pap 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 paper mache i'm so sorry in german it's pap mache <laughs> paper mache um, and that will never work but as you can see when it's dry it's completely sturdy and also this texture that we've made here stays like it is if you would iron it of course it would get flat anymore but for a journal this is just it's like embossed i would say with an embossing folder it's really really sturdy and now you could, could glue this into your journal as it is Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you could get some ideas on how to alter your photos. Have fun with this and see you the next time. Bye bye.